Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hukalo TV. This is uh, Saturday's webinar, July 18th, 2015. This is uh, part of the uh, Human Colony group that can be found at uh, www.humancolony.org. We have many channelers today. Jim is not available today. He is out of town, I believe. But um, today we have uh, Kim is going to be channeling, and Max is going to be channeling, and Wendy is going to be doing light languages in her channeling style. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be really good. Uh, Kim's going to start the first hour, Max the second hour, and Wendy the third hour, so that you're familiar with the format. Um, the guests here are Alex and David, and Sabrina is here, and Karen Newman, and Roxanne Swainhart is here, and Shrone is here, and Kim and Wendy and Max, and myself. Yeah, I think that's everybody. So um, I'd like to take a moment here to remind people that uh, Human Colony um, runs on donations. And if you're able to do so, please donate. And that information can be found at the website at uh, humancolony.org. And um, with that, I will pass over to Kim. Or and I'm sorry, not Kim. Uh, Sabrina, do you have uh, anything, Sabrina? Yeah. Um, I would like to welcome everybody that's here um, and those that are watching. There's four viewers right now. So... Thank you for that, and um, I want to say kudos to Max and Kim and Wendy, which I'm happy she's going to give it a go. Um, it'll be a few minutes. We're not going to push her too hard, um, but she's going to give it a go, and I'm, and I'm happy about that. Kim and Max were already out there, so... And Kim is also doing private sessions, and so it's Max. So if you guys are interested in that, please do go to the website, and the information is there, and how to donate, uh, how to set up a session. So please do do that. And uh, <clears throat> um, Alma Talk, I believe, has something to say first um, before uh, taking any questions. Also, please... If you have questions, please go to Google+. Plus. Uh, we chose not to do it in the chat box because normally, you know, we're typing there and then it's hard to keep track of the questions. So if the questions get posted over there, it's much easier to find them. Um, on that note, I'll give it over to Kim. And uh, I, I don't know if, if you need anything else, Kim. No, that's fine. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, I would just like to welcome everybody. Uh, it's lovely to be here again. Um, I would like to acknowledge that uh, I share tonight with Max. I am so very happy and also with Wendy and she will shine, of course. Um, Thank you to Dan and Sabrina um, for the work that they are doing always while Jim is away. And uh, may we all send some amazing energy Jim's way so <laughs> that we know he will have a wonderful weekend away. Um, okay, with that, um, if anybody would like to make any requests, um, please put them in the chat box quite quickly before uh, I go into trance. Um, it's unusual that someone I'm not familiar with will come in, but anything is possible. Um, okay, so... Kim, I will be checking in on you. Um, if yes, thank once, you. You know, once the hour passes and, and see... Um, mm -hmm. How are you doing and that kind of thing? So thank so. you very much. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, 
I will see you all later. Have a wonderful time and much love. <clears throat> Greetings, Earthians. This be Alma Talk once again. I am amongst you, my dear friends. It is my pleasure. How may I be of assistance? Well, um, I don't know if you have a message for us first. This is Sabrina. Welcome. Sabrina, hello. Thank you, yes. There is an issue I wish to address. May I share with you at this point in time, there is much Hathor energy moving amongst your membership. Now, there are those of you who are sensing this and there are those of you who are having a sensation of a kind of Hathor energy and are not recognising that this is what this directive is. There is movement amongst the group. The group, as we understand, our purpose is to unify. Now the Hathor energy is moving amongst within the individuals and also within the space in between the individuals. They are in contact with you all as you interact online and also as you sit in your homes. Now, Hukulu has greeted many members recently. The wonderful Hukulu is reaching far and wide. It is growing at this point at its fastest than it has since its origins. Now, James Charles, our wonderful founder, along with the wonderful Max, yes, please, may we give Max blessings. This is very important at this time. To Kerr visited with Jim. Jim was allowing of Takur to make an introduction specifically for these new members to share and view and understand what it is the Hukulo's goal is. Now, as anybody who is watching and listening to this now and perhaps further, I would ask that you seek this video out. It is readily available particularly the new membership and it is refreshing for the older membership also. It is reinforcing. Now this amongst the Hathor energy, amongst other efforts being made within the group, is encouraging you to share your experiences amongst the entire presentation of Hukulo. I would ask you all with the Hathor energy as a support to view that there is on offer to each of you, there is much, much lessonary, much sharing, what you call webinars, what you call hangouts, that are specifically designed for different purposes. The newer members, may I address you? And also, some of the elder ones, please, may I remind you, there Forever is a growing format of choice made available to our membership, your membership, the membership, the unity, the solidarity, the vibrational unison amongst you all. Please feel it. Feel it. Look to what you see as your events. Look to what you see is planned in your futures. 
Now I ask you, do not confine yourselves to one visitation, to one experience. I am asking you to move amongst other members, move amongst other journeys that may be on offer to you. Hukolo is actually a community that is great. You have come amongst a group who are gifted, who are interactive with all realms, alien and spirit, and importantly, yourselves. Now I'm asking you to expose yourself further amongst what is on offer to you in effort to support you in what you may define as ascension. The Hathors are asking you to explore. They're supporting you to explore. They will perhaps make something look to you a little more shiny. May I use that reference? You may see an event that has been posted up within your group, your internet, and perhaps it may stop you for one moment. This energy from the Hathors may stop you for just one moment and you may look twice at an event, something outside the realm of what you would normally participate in. May I ask you, attend it. Attend it. Attend another. Attend another. Make the effort. Make the effort. The effort is for you. I'm asking you to look after you. I'm asking you to broaden your spectrum. I'm asking you to look to the older members of the group who have evolved, who have great experience to share with our new membership. So please interact. Interact holistically. Interact in the sense that it is no, there is no division where there is only one experience that you seek. Please interact. Make assessments. Choose that which your free will is guided by. I do not wish to move you beyond your journey. What I am asking you to do is simply look to the choices of the journey you may take. So please, membership of Hugolo, open yourselves up, become available, become willing to experience new ideas, experience new integration, experience new vibrations. You shall grow holistically. Please do not confine yourselves to one particular area within Hugo. Please be unified. Please respect each other. Please love each other. And honour what the great Hugo stands for. Thank you. I will ask questions if it's appropriate. Answer questions. I correct myself. My apologies. Hello, Alma Talk. This is Guru Dan. How are you? Hello, Dan. I'm well. There's a question from a member, uh, Bijan. He's he's wondering if you can elaborate a little bit more on what you mean by the Hathor energy, because to me, the Hathor energy is more the tones and sounds. They use the tones and sounds to propagate their energy. And uh, if you could elaborate a little bit more on that, it may be helpful. Yes, absolutely. The Hathor energy is very vibrational energy. We are looking to connect with yourselves on a vibratory level. It is not necessarily a psychic communication that we reach for. It is not a telepathic one we reach for. It is a vibrational one. But this is the one constant between each of you. The intangibles the psychic abilities, the telepathic abilities, all that you may encompass, the empaths. The one constant between all is vibration. So this is why the Hathors come now in this form. This is why 
they are appropriate to be the ones to encourage members to move amongst other members because it is a vibrational journey. It is the one constant where the message may be shared. So this is why it is Hathors that are chosen at this point to create this encouragement and encourage you to embrace each other and all that you have to offer. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I believe so. Um, are there also Hathar type um, vibrations going on in the galactic languages that we've been listening to as well? Because there's been a there seems to be a surge in the galactic languages amongst the, the members and it's it's also interesting mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if there are activations and things going on in that as well that we may not be aware of. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, there's enhancement as well as encouragement to introduce yourself to new experiences. Yes. Those are becoming responsive. The elder members in particular that are responsive to these vibrations simply because they reside amongst them frequently. It will open them up also further. Now there are languages obviously that will come to you and present as new. For the languages, the galactic languages that you speak so well now and are so, so, so blessed and received in such a way that the beings, the species that hears you speaking their language feel incredibly honoured by the humans that they make this effort. So yes, as there are more alien species who come to visit Earth, who come to look upon Earth, to learn, to research, then perhaps ask to become a member of Gurkhvignia. This does happen, and yes, some have been turned away. So the Hathors, yes, will have the effect because it is an energetic experience. Those that are understanding their vibrational frequencies will pick up new experiences, not only just from the Hathors, but with this enhancement with the other species who are also showing an interest in Earth at this point. May I also share with you, this is having an effect on your governments. There is also the encouragement for unity there. In fact, I will not elaborate much further at this time. However, I would like to suggest to you the idea of a bill that was just recently passed in your United States regarding the idea of what you would call gay marriage. I understand this to be a massive step, a massive vibrational step for the human species. It is stirring up interest. It is creating all kinds of interesting energies. There are those who resist it. There are those who purge it. There are those who embrace it. So this is mixing the pot, as you would say. Now, yes, there is Hathor energy involved in this. I would like to share with you, and this is what I will not elaborate more on. Simply, I wish you to be aware that with the interactions between the Earthian governments and their delegates and the delegates of the aliens, the idea of embracing species of Earth has made the idea of embracing humans far easier. I will leave this suggestion in your capable hands at this time. Are there any other questions? Yeah, um, yeah well, I'm going to talk. Um, Sheer asked is there is a message for, for him for the channeling course that he's going to take? Sure. Yeah. Ah, yes. Yes, Sher is very excitable. He is a wonderful member. He is very keen. He is pure of heart. He will find in his channeling journey that he will experience 
some busyness in his conscious mind. Now this is only slightly limiting. It is certainly not a block, not even close. It is simply an altering of the vibration that he may need to make. Once he does this, his channeling will be clear and open and he will be successful in that which he wishes to attain. Okay, thank you. Um, now a personal question. Um, yesterday I, I was having this dream of a ceremony being performed. Um, the people were made of rectangular shape and there was a lion being uh, I believe he was the one doing it and then after that when I woke up I saw with my third eye a couple of stones and the lion being was on one of those and was the lion being on the stones residing amongst the blocks yes it, it, its image was also on in in one of the, the stones. Yes. Sabrina, may I ask you, these blocks, are they representative to you of perhaps the idea of blockages of yourself? Perhaps I will leave this to you to answer rhetorically. This dream is in effect, we will take the representation of the feline, of the strength in such a large feline on your planet. It represents courage. It represents strength. It represents loyalty. Now, the lion is standing upon stones of your earth. This represents this journey where you are required to call in the representation of this feline to remain encouraging you, supporting you to be grounded. Now, the reflection of the stones behind, the blocks, may I correct myself, the blocks, the reflection of the blocks behind, I believe they to be more of a, a literal sense of blockage, perhaps blockage where you need courage, you need courage and you need grounding to get beyond the block. So symbolically, these three ideas are quite significant. It is indicative of what is being required of you at this point in your life to bring yourself to the challenge and step up to the challenge to move beyond the blocks. The lion, the tiger will bring you the courage, the stones, the grounding. Yeah, because I know there was also like a ceremony happening because uh, I, I woke up and I was speaking some words Yes. with with what they were doing. Yes. Were you able to understand the words yourself? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I also wanted to ask you somebody brought up this to me so I'm sure she would appreciate you answering this um, obviously different people have different opinions on the higher self yes. um, so I, I would like to know how you define the higher self let me explain from the viewpoint from this advanced excuse me, vantage point, the mouth is getting a little dry, the vantage point from where I stand and I look out upon you, oh, excuse me, I must drink, my apologies. Mm. 
Yeah, I know. Sometimes mm -hmm. she needs that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, the voice, the voice this week was lost. It has only just returned. Mm. Yes. Thank you. My apologies. Please repeat the question. So the question was, how do you define the higher self? Yes, thank you. From the vantage point of where I would, what you call, exist, it is purely a resonance of source. It is purely a union of source. Now, as we move through the different dimensions, for the concept of the 3D human, this is how I would express to you the version of the higher self. Now, I wish to deliver this with the knowledge that I respect your individual belief systems. They are very important, for they are what guide you on your journey to achieve what it is you came into this lifetime, lifetime to learn. Now. I will explain the higher self in the simplest way. The higher self is a part of a collective of spirit, a group that you are very familiar with. Imagine this group to be likened to a family. Now understand also that in spirit there is far more union of energy for there is no mass to separate, obviously. Spirit may move. It may move from being supportive as a guide from one individual in an incarnation, not necessarily only on your planet, but on all planets where there is incarnate life. This is another uh, alignment that you share with other species of alien. You are all spiritual beings. Now the higher self is the dominant self. There are guides. They are there to support you. They will move through your realms as you move through your life, as you move through your lessons. Now, I ask you to attempt to grasp this idea. As you come into this incarnation, we will discuss it in a 3D experience. As you come in to this planet in your incarnation, with the agreement in place that you have the desire to learn certain lessons. Now this is an effort to improve and also enhance your vibration. Now you refer to this as ascension. This be appropriate. Now, there are abundant choices for you to make to experience your lesson while you are incarnate. In this way you, ex you exude and you experience your free will. Now before you incarnate you have designed this entire experience also you have designed those who will incarnate with you to assist you in leading to your lessonary, perhaps even to clear on situations where you would create perhaps karma. Whatever the lessonary be and whatever journey you choose to take, and please understand how many thousands of choices are there, how many millions that your spirit realm understands this before you enter this planet. They agree to play a million parts, a million roles, a million ways to support you in the spiritual realm. Now they are there to guide you. This is why they are called guides. The higher self is one that would most often have been incarnated and mastered a part of a life that is imperative to the lesson that you have come in to learn at this point in time. At times 
it is understood the higher self perhaps maybe someone who is very well known yes in some cases in other cases no it may be someone who has had many hardships and has mastered the adversity and they be your higher self this is most effective please understand ever efficient ever effective to you in these expressions as I speak to you about your vibration about your resonance your frequencies your hue your relationship to your spirit realm understand the vastness and the greatness of each of you given that you can understand that there are million choices that you may make in rolling your free will to reach your listenary it is vast simply for each for one so the higher self is really a reference point it is a reference point between yourself your guys your guides very relatable to your guides there is constant interact interaction between your guides and your higher self now your higher self is as another step towards source may I take you from there to keep this explanation very simple the higher self straight to source so taking into account that there is yourself your vibration your piece of source that you carry with you eternally then there be the realm of the spirit the realm of your higher self and then the destination the final destination of the wonderment and greatness of source does this answer your question Yes, thank you. Um, I, I will let uh, Sharon ask questions then. Okay, I'll ask one for Bijan first. Um, and he asks if there are any messages for him. Bijan? Yes. Bijan. Yes, yes. Yes, Bijan. Welcome, dear friend, to the community. I would like to encourage you to participate in as you have begun. The way in which you have begun, I would ask you to proceed. You offer support and it is discreet. It is a lovely thing to observe. You have high resonation. You do feel you are telepathic and you are timely. With what you share with the group. Now, Bijan, you are also one who had asked to explore the other realms of your globe. Explore what is on offer. Explore what the offers, are, what the members have mastered and are offering to you. You are one, my friend, who would gain much out of traveling around your globe, learning, interacting with ideas that perhaps you thought you perhaps never would. So please expand yourself. Please look to others in the group and move forward using your empathic abilities. They are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Alma Talk. And um, my name is Sharon, and I have a question as well, please. Um, Sharon, yes. <laughs> nice to speak with you again. Thank you. Yes, um, you too. <laughs> uh, first of all, I guess I would like to ask a general question. Can you tell us what it feels like um, after the human species accepts the idea of oneness and they come into the idea of the new human? What does that feel like? Ah, when you say come into the idea of a new human, could you elaborate, please? Um, coming into uh, using more of the uh, power of the DNA field, I guess, or um, the uh, 
Mm. Are you speaking energetically or are you speaking yes. about mass? Uh, energetically. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are, are you referring to perhaps some personal growth and the experience within the body regarding that? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes. This is a vibrational experience. This is something that very often can be impacted with a vast shift in a very short period. There are some that have chosen this. There are others that will do it slowly over a period of time and they will notice it in reflection. There will be a reference point in reflection where they will feel a sense of disconnect to the idea of that who they were. So as, as the ascension process happens as your source and your collective grows and connects, the cellular body does respond, it will enhance in its health, it will enhance in its stealth. There will also be alteration in your sleep patterns. You may find that you require less sleep or alternatively you will find you require more. If you require more, it is because you are very active in your dream time. Now, this may be doing things such as visiting the colonies, as many of you do, or visiting other areas in the galaxies where you have agreed to be a part of some kind of creation. Now, this also be something that would be on offer to you as you were to ascend, as you would say. It is enhancement. I prefer to use that word. It is enhancing yourself. It is becoming more connected with yourself. It is understanding what the definition of yourself is. So yes, the effect of the vibration and the energy of source within the body, the 3D body, as you come to understand yourself further, as you come to understand you have abilities that are intangibles, the vibration of you physically will also raise. So this will be the experience. Others will look to you differently. You will relate differently to others. This will be something that you will sometimes stand in amongst a group and wonder at why you are receiving the attention you are. If you are not yet aware of your shift, then this would perhaps be your experience. And also, in this way, it may bring to your attention that yes, there has been a shift. This is the universe, this is the reflection being shown to you that you have grown. There will be a collective who follows. It's the natural course of evolution. Does this answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. And I have a, a personal question. Um, I have um, been learning a lot of new things for myself and I just wanted to know if you could give me some advice on moving forward. I feel like I, I do want to do things too quickly and I understand I just need to allow things to happen. Um, but I also know that we are capable of moving quickly as well, so I feel a little bit stuck there. Mm, yes, Shron. Oh, did I speak over you? Nope, no. <laughs> yes, Shron, may I say this to you? There is purpose in the speed at which one might look to grow. Now, in some instances this is desirable for this is associated with the agreement that you come into this earth with the lessonary and the goals that you look to learn. It is unusual that it would be required of a 3D human to do this quickly. This is something I often share. Please take heed. 
if you look to grow yourself, if you look to ascend yourself quickly, if you wish to do what I've heard referred to as jump dimensions, then what it's essentially you are asking is to be presented with the great challenges of your lesson area very quickly. There is a trade-off here. There are lessons for you. You may choose to experience them slowly and also deal with the emotional impact, may there be one, slowly. The reverse may happen. If you choose to jump dimensions, then the amount of lessons that you look to, to learn are vast and they will happen quickly. And this may often be far too much for 3D human to handle. So my advice, and this is why I refer to 3D plus beings, is to grasp the idea of being a human and all that that encompasses, all that that embraces, because that is absolutely enough. The 3D human is a wondrous creature. You are blessed to be incarnated on this earth at this time. So yes, I would say to you, if you wish to jump dimensions, then be prepared to have your lessons come to you thick and fast. It is your choice, you have free will. Now, Sean, the other part of your question. It is simply orderliness that you need to enroll. There may be many things that you are reaching for that you believe will help you and support you to move to the place that you are aiming for. You are enrolling your free will. Now, if it feels a little scattered, it is as if anything. It is as if your home, your house, your room, your space is cluttered. If this be the case, you may look to it and think, ah, yes, I will clean this up. Another example I would give you is also what you would call time management. You use diaries. Now these are practical tools. So I'm asking you, please, use these ideas that are offered to you. Reflect them back upon yourself. If you are feeling scattered spiritually, if you are feeling scattered in your ascension, then what you need to enroll is orderly. It is management. It's not control. Please do not look at it as control. It is simply you have the ability to manage your experience. You have the ability to manage the speed at which you move through it and you have the ability to choose which part you wish to experience first. So my dear friend, please just be orderly and then it will flow. Use your intuition, understand, which will bring you the growth that you need to move to the next one in sequence for you to have a more pleasant journey. Does this answer your question? Yes, thank you. I'm going to talk. Um, Laura? posted a question. She yes. said um, she has questions on different uh, energy healing modalities and the difference between them. Um, she listed some Reiki, Universal White Time Healing, the Reconnection, Holy Fire Reiki. Yes. Also much love and gratitude to Para. And she uh -huh. said she's very excited to work with him. Yes, yes, my friends, there are many forms of energy healing that occur on your planet and you receive energy healing from aliens that are off planet also, they are on ship and they send you energy regularly. So it is not only the healing energy that you share with each other, 
and it is not only the healing energy that you reach to the human collective and look to for the healing energy. There is also the healing energy of Gaia. There are many forms, there are many names. Simply put, it is a transference of energy. The name in itself is for identification purposes only. So I would answer this question in this way. If you need to give it a label, if you need to give it a name because, because you wish to make a distinction between each of the healing methods, ultimately the outcome is the same. Now you may enroll several tools. You may enroll psychic abilities. Again, I refer the intangibles. You may enroll the way in which your vibration moves and resonates with those that you heal. At the end of what you call your day, the outcome is the same. Please do not be too confused about the naming of your healing. It is simply a way to identify that 3D humans are using to assess and make choices. This is where resonance comes in. So I would say to Laura, there is little difference. The difference is in the name and the intention. If you as a healer move to a client and wish to heal this client, and choose to do so by sharing whatever energy it is that is required of you at that point to heal, it is not necessary to give it a name. I would ask you not to define it. I would ask you to call it healing. If you need to give it a name so that it be relatable to other beings around you, certainly do this. I say to you perhaps, not always, copycat the name that is regularly used. Create your own. Create a name that resonates with you and that will resonate with the clientele you will attract. But please remember and understand if you are enrolling all of your abilities into an energy form of healing then the experience is the same and the outcome is the same. Thank you. She would also like to know if you have any messages for her. Ah, yes. Yes, I have one for herself and also for love. I'll be in contact with her very soon. Okay. Um, there is a message, uh, a question also from Terry from Carlton. Terry Carlton, sorry. Um, she asks, I have been feeling some very heavy vibrations that affect my physical body as well as my heart space and quite literally to me is affecting the whole room. Am I being affected by beings or is this just my own spiritual perception slash connection? Yes. Is she available to ask? Is Would she define this as depression? I'm sorry? Is she available to ask further? Would she define this as what you would call depression? Oh. Um, if I not, that'd be fine. Yeah, I don't think she is. Yes. Okay, this is something that many humans experience. Perhaps not for an entire lifetime, though some do. It is part of the journey. It is part of the vibratory growth. Now, interestingly enough, when there are these times when your energies are low, you reference them as being dark. Now, darkness is a heavy feeling if you are to choose to wear it. It is not impossible to shine the light on the darkness. Now I would say to her, 
what is influencing her, what she feels is confining her, what she feels is what she calls darkness, in the sense that she is a vibratory being, in the sense that she's an individual vibratory being, that if she is being affected by, I feel in this case her question is a spiritual realm idea that perhaps is not serving her or maybe a reptilian one as typically they are known this way. This is a sad stereotype, however, I will continue with this point. She may choose, she may choose in her effort, in her relationship, in her communication with Source. Now Source is the form of the lightest gold you may imagine. In truth, it is actually far outside the spectrum that you may see. Now, she did she's she does feel it as depression and that she did confirm what you asked. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That is a challenge. Yes. I would I will continue with the point that I was making because it is relevant. If she is to reach to source, if she may and is able to share some time with herself and be comfortable with that and perhaps enroll a little bit of self-comfort, a little bit of embracing herself, a little bit of understanding that it is okay to feel depression. It is part of lesson area. Now, once she has embraced it, once she has understood it, because it is natural for humans to resist it, it does not feel good. However, if there is lessonary involved, then yes, embracing it is the most efficient way and effective to replace it with something far brighter. Now this is a situation where there is a replacement of vibration. There is not a change of vibration, there is a replacement. What happens is your own vibrationary level, your own frequency actually does what you call morphing. It will alter and it will change. Now this will essentially happen through a connection with source. Shining the light of source into the self. Now initially with depression this is very difficult. And at times there are outside methods that may be needed. But I feel in her case that she is confined. I feel that she under, she feels as if she does not have a choice in this situation. I wish to express to her, please understand she does have a choice here. She is where she is now so that she may move, so that she may understand how to move upwards because if she does and she grows, she embraces source, she embraces the tools, the love of the people around her. She's obviously interacting with the group, the wondrous group of Hiklo. If she chooses to take this path, find support, Wherever she is drawn, look to the area of Hugolo that appears most shiny to her. I encourage this to all of you. Look to the shiny places in Hugolo that draw you. Now, as she starts to shine, as she starts to replace the existing energy that no longer is serving her, then she will begin to feel a levity. I do not wish her to have this experience happen quickly. There is a reason that she is in this point at this time. She will learn how to grow herself, how to become, how to receive, how to look to love, 
how to look to source, how to look to the spiritual realm, how to look to the alien realm, how to look to the greatness inside her to bring her own healing, to bring her self-likeness, to visualize herself as a feather. This is very effective. Visualizations in depression of you being a lighter being, a lighter representation such as a feather in the wind, in the sun. These are methods that you may choose that resonate with you to pull yourself up out of this. Now, this is very important for her because she will be one that once she obtains this to be her reality, to teach others how to do it. This is part of her lesson area. It is a difficult one, yes. But she may find her way out. She has a community to draw on. She also has beings to draw on. She has a spirit to draw on. I would ask her even to notice, perhaps take notes, diarise, as she ascends herself higher, as she pulls herself out of the deep hole that depression is often referred to as. For they will be important later when she is assisting others to move out of their depressions. Is that enough? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Sharon? Hello again. I have a question for a couple uh, friends. This is for uh, my friend Vanessa and hmm. she wanted to ask, she's very, very new to all this, and she wanted to ask if there's anybody trying to reach her. She's actually in contact. Wow. Uh, may I eliminate the word try here? Yes, please. Yes. She is actually in contact with part of her spirit realm. There is a guide in particular. And this guide actually has been a very strong presence since she first entered the, the planet. So it would be difficult for her to understand at this point that she is actually being reached. If she is able to and work towards the idea that she can recognize the difference between her vibration and the difference of the vibrations of the being around her, then she may recognize it. But it is lovely. It is lovely that she has come in and she has held on to this idea for this journey and she's come to this point to ask this question now. It is lovely. It really is. Yeah. Somebody else? Yes, it is. And I have one for Amy. Her last name is pronounced Stegeman. And she said, I'm fairly new, but are there any messages for me? Thank you and many blessings. Amy? Yes, Amy. Stegeman. Amy. Yes. Yes, I would ask Amy to explore the idea of galactic languages. Perhaps she may draw, join one of the galactic language hangouts. I believe that Sabrina runs these on a regular, on a regular basis. I would guide her here first. I feel she will resonate with this idea. It will be a great opening for her. It will be a catalyst as she moves through the group further. There are other experiences that she will come to understand about herself as with the other friend we just spoke of. So I would encourage her to go towards the galactic language idea to begin with. Dan? Hello, Alma Talk. I have a question for Johannes. Um, yes. he'd like to ask some guidance with his dog, the relationship with his dog and himself, uh, his dog's uh, uncontrollable uh, energies, uncontrollable energies from his dog. He wants to know if there's any messages for him and he's also curious if his Pleiadian DNA activation has completed. So those, those three things from Johannes, if you can help him out please. 
<laughs> yes. I may not address the DNA situation at this time. My apologies. This is something that at this point is purely up to the wonderful Tukur. She will be delegating these responsibilities. But at this point, this is something I may not answer. Now, could you please repeat, re, re, oh, goodness me, the mouth again. Yeah, he wanted some guidance about his relationship with the dog and the uncontrollable energies and if you have any messages, personal messages for him. Yes, may, may I just take a drink again? My apologies. Yeah, sure, certainly. Go ahead. Mm. Mm. Yes, my apologies, yes. Ah, the dogs. The dogs, are they plural? Does he have more than one? Uh, just singular, I believe. Uh, just the one that I've seen in his video so far. Yes. Or it'll be, the dog, it'll be the dog with the uncontrollable energy. Yes, it is excitable. It is overexcitable. It is as if you would look to one of your human children and you perhaps may label it as having something you call ADHD. It is an imbalance. This dog in particular is actually attracted to him because he is tolerant of it. Now, this may be short lived. The dog will not sense. If he, as the owner, is resisting the idea, the dog will sense if he, as the owner, is the leader of the pack. Now, if he can emulate the idea, even in the physical activity of walking the dog, now if he is to take the dog for some exercise, I would suggest to him, put on some heavy boots. Wear something on your feet area that will vibrate on the ground as you move. This heavy experience, this heavy vibration amongst particularly the dogs on your planet or the canine species, it is indicative of leadership. It is indicative of being the most powerful. It is indicative of the leader of the pack. Now, if he is to calm down this dog, this practice would need to occur regularly. I wonder if he is exercising this dog also. It is very important for this dog. To this dog does not understand that it is acting outside of its boundaries. And it will not until it's calm enough, as any human is calm enough to embrace the idea and to consider it, consider how it is affecting those around it. So yes, he needs to instill that he is the leader of the pack with this dog. If there are other family members, then yes, please too also use the heavy footsteps. He will journey down to a lower point in the pack. He will calm down because his brain will be active with looking to the other members of his pack ensuring that he is playing the role that he is expected to play and this will calm him because his mind will be busy with other things, things that would have occurred naturally if he was to be born in the wild. So please share that with him. Was there something else? Um, I have one last question uh, from Alan and he wanted to know if there was a message for him. Alan, yes, please Alan, you are journeying at this point on time my friend exactly as you may. It is actually a pleasant time for you in your life. You are cruising, my friend. You would call it cruising. 
Enjoy this period. As you move, you are collective information. You're also very intuitive. So where you are taken and where you choose your journey, where you choose your movement, is very effective for you. So at this time, please enjoy it. Recollect, remember, store the memory of the issues and the ideas that you are learning and collecting as you move. You will recall, you will look back further, you will refer back to these experiences that you are having now and they will serve you greatly. So please, enjoy the journey you are on for this time and know that your lesson area that you are choosing to learn at this time will support you further in your journey. Is that enough? Yes, I believe so. Thank you, Alma Todd, for the wonderful messages you gave today and for answering all of our questions. Um, we welcome you to come back. Yes, thank you. Wish, let us know. Yes. Uh, and I also want to thank Kim for also doing this. So yes. that now we will let you go now and uh, yes. let Max now channel. Yes. Yes. You. May Mama's I please come. just say something very quickly? Yes, please. Yes, I wish to address Max. Max, my dear friend, you are a wonderful light on this planet. I ask you to embrace it. I ask you to see yourself even if you may get a glimpse of the greatness that you emit to others. Understand Hugolo was your baby. Hugolo is you. So please, in your moments of downtime, Look to that, for it is great. There are not many on this planet who would look to achieve something this great. I just simply would like to have shared that and I would like to have done it publicly. So I thank you very much. Namaste, my friends. Much love and much delight. Namaste. I will bring you back. Thank you. Namaste. <sighs> Give me a minute. How is the sound? Very good, Max. Very good. Yeah, sounds as well. <sighs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I will start. Raha here. V I A L. Welcome. No, thank you. I will start. I will start from a little presentation on the idea of bubble realities, bubble realities. And then we'll take questions. Yes. You know, it's very familiar. I will remind you, bubble realities are very familiar to you. Very, very familiar. You read a book, you dive into a book and you create a bubble of fictional reality of that book inside yourself. You are there. It's very different. It is a different tune, different vibe. Ah. Ah. 
different tune, different vibe, yes. You go into the presence of someone who has a strong vibe. It's a different bubble reality. Understand that you create bubble reality around yourself all the time. It's your creation, your vibe spreading out of you and penetrating their illusion of others, penetrating the illusion of reality. You shine the light like a flashlight on the environment around you and you create your own reality. You use a code for that, a computer code if you will, much more sophisticated than a computer code, but it is in, a, in essence a program, a hologram, a matrix. The time is an illusion, the reality is an illusion, the body is an illusion, but those are very well-designed illusions, well-programmed illusions. Try to walk through a wall and you will sense for yourself how well it is programmed. Try to be late for a plane or a train or a doctor appointment and you will sense how good is an illusion of time. It's really well programmed. It's really well programmed. <laughs> you understand. And understand your bubble is slightly different than the bubble created by anyone else. You share big part of the code. You uh, shine your light on already existing matrix, on already existing hologram. But within this bubble, there is something different. When you're looking at the same scene and seeing a different aspect of it, this different perspective of it, it is because you shine your light at a different angle. So it's not surprising that people misunderstand you and you misunderstand people because you are looking from often from a different perspective, unless you go merge with their vibe and look through their eyes and then you look from their perspective. So your bubble reality of reality, your reality bubble is uh, so different, it has different past and a different future, slightly different past and slightly different future. And this past and this future changes as your vibration change. You harbor mm, different vibrations within you, you know that. When you are up, you shine with one light. When you are down, you shine with another light. When you move sideways and speak to one friend, it's one vibration. When you are alone, it's a different vibration. When you watch something, it's a different vibration. So your bubbles have also different aspects. Why is it important? Ah, because we are coming to you through channelings. We co-create new bubbles of reality. And these bubbles grow and merge. That's the key. These days, these bubbles grow and merge. So when you look for proof, ah, proof, evidence, confirmations, If you look inside the bubble, everything is perfect. You have all the confirmations you need. You have all the clarity you need. When you step down on Earth and walk on Earth, you are in a different bubble, and everything looks suspicious. Everything looks like a fog bubble cloud. It really doesn't, the bubble breaks. <laughs> It blows. Ah. So it really depends where you are. In one second you believe it all. Another second, another moment, you move into a different angle, different vibration. And it doesn't exist at all. You are alone, lonely in a material world. Accept it. Accept it. It is a part of the game, a part of the hologram. You took it in yourself voluntarily.
you know, a volunteer, you went down to this, down here, into this uh, hard vibration, heavy vibration, uh, depression pushes you out of this, actually. It's so painful, you leave your body and then you are back to light. But, of course it's your choice. But you came down here to connect the high vibe, high vibration bubble, high vibration vibe with low vibe, with material vibe. One hand up, one hand down, or two hands up, two feet on the ground, connect to this ground, connect to this material sensation. And actually, there are flows of different vibrations down. So you connect on all levels to the earth, on, le on all levels to the heavy vibe of the matrix, and through your higher chakras to higher vibes of the matrix. Or any chakra can connect anywhere. So you connect one hand, your branches to the sky and roots to the earth to the lower frequencies and play with it play with it yeah play with it you are God you know that you are a copy of God a fractal copy of God you know fractal right fractal fractal is something which can create a copy of itself Somewhat different, but it is a copy. And then that copy is able to create another copy. Somewhat different, but a copy. Like children and grandchildren. They are a copy of you, but somewhat different. And they can create their own copy. In this way, the God created you. You are a grand child of God, a grand, a great, 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 infinite number of times, grandchild, but you still are a copy of God. And your higher self is a copy of God, and you are a copy of your higher self, a fractal copy. You, you are it. It's inside copy. You are inside of God. You are inside of your higher self. And as an exercise, as a daily routine, as a daily spiritual practice, when you are doing anything, especially when you are doing your physical part of life, invite your higher self in your body. And through that, invite the God in your body, the Creator. They want to experience that physical life through your senses, through your perceptions, through your physical mind. So invite them. Feel the buzz in your fingers. Feel the buzz in your toes. Feel goosebumps in your skin when they come in. They cannot come in in full. They cannot physically. It's not possible to populate yourself with God. You will explode. But a part of them, their conscious intelligence presence enters into your body. And whatever you do, low physical stuff, they will experience it. That's an exercise a permission slip, allowing you to alleviate your suffering, alleviate your pain, which is part of life, alleviate your fear of death, which is part of life, and be present at the same time, here and there, here and inside, here and in God body. You feel God, your spine Stritens, you are God. Your energy shines. You are God. You are your higher self. You are here playing on the field. Yes, you are God. Namaste. I welcome God in you. And I welcome questions 
if there are any. Hello. David. All right, I think I go first. Hello. Yes, hello. This is David. Thank you for being here. Hi, Dave. Do I know you? Probably not. I think it's the first time talking, but that's a part of my question, I guess. Um, because I would like Thank to you. know... Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I would like to know if, by any chance, I have already been on Colony. I applied, I think, at the beginning of the last month. This information doesn't is not available to me down here at the moment, but I wish to help you in any other way. What is your birthday? The day and the month. I it's just wish sixth. to connect to you. That's the sixth of March. Ah thank you. And what's your favorite color? Mm, probably blue. Ah Thank you. Thank you. So you are attracted to the stars and you just discovered human colony recently, is it right? Um, I have discovered it about, um, I think, a year ago, but uh, I just joined ah. the site recently. And how is your life flowing since then? Flowing since then? Energetically, very interesting. I have uh, also recently started channeling. Ah. Um, maybe the energy from the colony is helping me. I don't know. Um, I would also like to know, do you happen to know Aishwa, who, who happens to be a Yael as well? This information <laughs> is not coming to me at the moment. I am beyond the veil. It's a part of me, down, part of us down here. Ah. We are disconnected, but on other levels we are connected. What's your highest excitement? Channeling <laughs> apparently is an excitement. What else do you do? Yes, channeling definitely is one of my highest excitement. Ah. The only thing that probably could be more exciting would be physical contact with uh, one of you guys on the colonies or otherwise. I think that would be my highest excitement of all. Yeah, that would be our highest excitement as well. Yay! We wish to. <laughs> Ah, uh, meet in person. Yes, we wish to hug. <laughs> yes. We wish to step down and bring you up. That would be so wonderful. What are your challenges these days? Yeah, that's a good question. What, what are your challenges? Mm. Is everything well? Well, bridging probably, bridging between the, all those higher knowledge and uh, the things that are coming in from outside and integrating that in my day-to-day -day 3D reality. That probably is my greatest challenge, to find a connection there. If you understand yeah, your, I mean. your question brings up the answer. It's, it's that, that's it, integration, yes. And how do you go about it? Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing. Um, how to do it. Um, yeah, uh, something that I have also been suggested by um, people of your kind is uh, to integrate more with human beings here in uh, who may not be 100% awakened uh, here on Earth, uh, and thereby also making it easier to communicate with people outside of the planet, because uh, everything that we experience in our day-to-day uh, reality with other people might also be reflected when we communicate with people on the colonies or on other worlds. Is there something you can confirm? Yes, yes, absolutely. You just read my mind, yes. <laughs> so maybe I've channeled you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, any other suggestions uh, what, uh, what to do to, to get myself more to a place where we can hack, where we can come to that place? Um, uh, or in general, not just for me, for everybody. Yeah, where do I start? <laughs> you know all the answers, you heard all the answers. Uh, the, the choices are yours, obviously. You are playing, your choice is respected. Uh, 
Have you explored the idea of healing Reiki energy, healing and other energy healing ideas? No, but I recently wanted to, to get a Reiki appointment because I found out that somebody not so far away from me does Reiki. Absolutely. Well, is that something you would suggest I should do? Absolutely. Uh, play with energies. Feel them. Everybody is a healer. You are a healer just because you survived to this age. You can heal yourself. Now, when you start playing with energies, healing energies, healing energies of your heart and your hands, and when you heal yourself better, you purify yourself using understanding of energetic health. You become more pure and it's easier to you, how to say, to dive up, to fly, dive up, hmm. jump up and stay up, to stay in a higher vibe. By design, by genome design, by environment, you cannot be there for a long time, you come back. But as you purify yourself, you can be more and more there. And as you bring your higher self down, you even when you are in low vibration, they can still send their energies through you, through your chakras to your body and bring you up easier. So self-healing and working with energies is one thing is obviously you can do. And healing others. How much are you spending time with children? Do you have children around? No, I don't have children around. Uh, their energies are very helpful. You are becoming more like a god. You more experience more a fatherly role when they, you are in their presence. So see if you have nephews or any other children where you can be of service. You know, mo most of the parents, they don't have free time, especially the small children. They are exhausted. So any help is welcome you might help your friends and family with children and pets as well. That also brings in proper energies. It's part of your, all is about your spiritual growth, reconnecting, integrating your different levels, different bodies, and it has its own structure. So when you do these steps, your body, your reconnection grows as a body of etheric reconnection body. Your spirit grows into you. That's the idea. Your spirit reconnects with you, grows structurally into you, reconnects to your chakra so they become more structured. It's a very mm, technical and specific process mm, of chakras reconnecting and strengthening the connection with your higher level. And it's a lifetime exercise, yes. How much you communicate with light workers locally, physically? How much do you hug light workers physically? Oh, not all very often. I only know two two other light workers that live in my area and we see each other maybe um, yeah, maybe every month. Oh, that's great. Grow that. Grow as you would grow a plant. Yeah, grow that. Your okay. bubble of reality, reconnect with other bubbles of reality of your people of your vibration. Unite online and locally, physically. And these bubbles, they're not actually bubbles. It's bubble is just uh, one of analogies. They're more like, you know, if you light a candle in the fog at night, you see a sphere of light around the candle. That would be a better definition. But these bubbles are not spherical. They spread around and they can merge like plasma or they can merge together. And there is sparkles and electric discharges. Yes, electric discharges connecting this uh, orbs of light, your orb of light with orbs of light of other light workers. 
that is the process we are observing now. And it's very delighting. That's a path to your personal ascension, personal spiritual growth, and path to global ascension on the, on the planet, of the humanity, to connect these bubbles of new reality. They're different. So when interact, there is difference, and these electric discharges energize the synchronization, integration of those. So connect these dots of light together. Network, network. Find network. people of your vibration. You wanted to say something. Yes, um, is it is it uh, recommendable to to also build uh, physical communities uh, where people only live together as light workers, um, or is it too exclusive that we uh, don't interact and in more with society? Because I think there has been recently, at least from my perception, uh, been a growing trend in, in the community. Um, of light workers here on Earth to, to form those uh, living spots where they are kind of seclusive uh, to hold the higher vibration in, in selected areas on the planet. It is happening, absolutely, and it is a delight to see how it is happening. Be practical, be practical, be practical. You are in a hologram which is dominated by a collective choice. So mm. you create your bubble of reality, bubble of light, in a big swamp of darkness. So when you create this community, be practical. Who will feed you? If many light workers who haven't, don't have income come together, it becomes a disaster. You know that. <laughs> many hippie communities. Study the, the story of hippie communities. It's very easy to find online. There are many documentaries, especially the dark ones, mainstream ones, when they show how it was nice and how it ended up in a disaster, right? So study that and learn on that lesson. You need to have people who have jobs. You need to have jobs. You need to have income. And then you can build a community. That's their status in current state, a state of affairs. But obviously, this, as your bubble of light grows, things start coming to you, people start coming to you, and you don't need as much. Learn how to live economically, yes. Mm. To be practical mean, means learn how to live economically, so you can sustain yourself easily. Many things you can drop, like coffee and alcohol and other expensive things, and things that make you want more. Actually, yeah. inner peace. Disconnection allows you to eat less, consume less, and still be very spiritual and very connected. Disconnection from low vibes and connection to high vibes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here is the recipe. Uh, apples and put your, buy this mm, uncooked almonds, put them in the water for overnight. Take the water out, and this is a perfect diet. Very cheap and very spiritual. <laughs> yes. Nice. I will try it out, yes. So yes, exciting. learn from the existing communities. Basically, you don't have to build a strong wall. You need a way to get your food and medicine and stuff, mm. and shoes, and internet, Wi-Fi, and stuff. So you cannot really disconnect from, from the world. So learn, look at the communities where people do it practically and nicely. Many students, many, many young people, they find a way to live very spiritual lives while still being within the system. Because eventually you will have to rebuild the system, rebuild the corporations. It will be one enlightened corporation, but it still be, will be, in a way, a corporation. People will work together in big groups and do things and help each other. So it is, in a way, a corporation. It's going to be a corporation just of nice people doing nice things. So really? see, yes. 
Yes. See what is happening around. Learn from new experiences, new ways of working together. Yeah. Working together, have a project, not just living together, working together, building startups, growing startups, combining them together, yes, doing business together. That's the new modern trend which will eventually change the world, yes, reconnecting, networking, yes. I'm sorry I took so much time, but it actually helped very much my, my point, yes. More the bubbles. Thank you. I invite more questions. And let me know when my time is over. Okay. Kim, I will. Thank you. Yes, hello. Um, it's lovely to meet you. May I welcome you? I, this is Kim. I have not spoken with you before. Um, thank you so much for joining with the vibration of Max and enabling him to do this amongst us. I am incredibly grateful. We love Max dearly and since you know him so intimately, may I ask you what is it we may do to support Max at this time? Is there something that we may actively do to aid him and support him as he has done us? Ah, <laughs> thank you, Kim. Bless be your heart. Bless be your aura, the flow of energies around you. Bless be your creation of peace, your friends, your family, your space. Let's be your space and time continuum. Yes. Thank you for the question. Max is on a journey and he is making, <laughs> as usual, mm, their steps, their turns, yes. Brave <laughs> steps, brave turns, and these are his choices. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so, so do what you do. And he likes to, when people knock on his door, yes, keep knocking, keep sending messages randomly, and don't be surprised when he is not home, but keep knocking on the door. <laughs> That's the best thing. I will. I will definitely knock. Thank you very That's much. It. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for your question, though. Mm. <laughs> flowers, flowers, flowers. Ah. May each snowflake remind you of a flower. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Wendy? Hello, Rojo. Can you hear me okay? Your, your voice sounds like from very far distance, but all the words come through just fine. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to say hello again. It's been a little while since we've spoken. And I and it's funny that you talk about flowers again because the last time we spoke we were talking about flowers and colors. Um, but my real question to you is um, I very much enjoy galactic languages and so I'm very um, interested in communication um, between others species and, and our galactic families and I was curious what is the Yael's or, or your specifically your favorite form of communication I'm curious whereas you spoke earlier about hugging which I found very um, um, enlightening and I wanted to ask you about that is is do you also enjoy touching and, and hugging as much as do you use verbal communication or do you prefer telepathy? Do you enjoy the, the touch, the actual physical touch? Thank you for asking, yes. Mm. How to explain? Uh, uh, yes, we are 
Yes. The answer is yes. We enjoy it. Uh, we, how to say that? We, our mission is to see the life in the galaxy. We are the gardeners. That's how we see ourselves. We are the gardeners. And the gardener has to touch. So that's what we do. We grow life. We love babies. We love creating hybrids. We love planting the life in planets, on planets, in space, on the ships. That's what we do. And as creatures, as beings, we are connected telepathically. Our telepathy is very strong. So our preferred way of communication for a while has been telepathy. And our telepathy is very structured. We like to have stuff, thoughts to our own. So we have protection, we have limits where stuff is ours, thoughts are ours, our mental process is very structured, it's inside. But then we connect through chakras and through our higher self spiritual connections and through our DNA vibrations and through things which don't have a name in human language. We connect through all of that, but our communication is deliberate. We send messages if we wish to. We ask questions, we re receive messages, and we have a luxury, the mm -hmm. access, we have the access to our collective higher self and to the spirits, but our connection to our collective higher self, collective consciousness of our species is very strong. So we can send messages and receive messages. And we just can tune into the wave and be one by choice again. We can connect to the people and to the collective energy by choice. and we always feel the presence. So some of our connections are always there. We are always connected. Even if we don't have messages, we still are connected. So when we touch, it is a nice addition. Yes, we, nice, we like touching. It's, a, it's an additional connection, but it's not a primary one, obviously. Yes, especially because we have an option to appear and disappear in different uh, places and you can even move in time a little bit back and forth. So, <laughs> yes, I sensed that. <laughs> so uh, just a little bit. We choose not to go too far because that's a part of experience to not to know what what lies in the future. So so the touch is there, but it's more of a touch of a gardener than the touch of the human, where it is. The first connection you have, not the additional, but it's the first connection you have. Sometimes, often. Shake, handshake it would be the first connection you have with the person, and then you connect energetically more. We are somewhat different here, other way around. Well, thank you. That was a really beautiful answer. I really appreciate that. Um, I feel You're very welcome. connected. Thank you for asking. And I do feel very connected to the Yael, um, so I do invite you anytime to um, contact me telepathically if you like, and um, I would be happy happy for that conversation. I will give you a symbol. Just a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. Imagine Yin and Yang. You know this. Yeah, something like that. Yin and Yang. Ha! You know, I just received that message telepathically before you showed it to me. Thank you so uh -huh. much for that. But imagine, yes, 
Yes, yes, yes. Imagine yin and yang. A part of it, very funny, would be uh, bright green color, bright green, burning green color. And another would be burning yellow. <laughs> so funny. But that would be the symbol to connect to me, just for you. Thank you. Or anybody else, but that's just created. I, it's not an ancient symbol. It was just created right now. You're welcome. Hello. Yes. Hello, Rojo. This is Gordon. How are you? Hello, Gordon. I'm good. How are you? I am good. I am good. It's so glad to see you. I'm so glad. I have a question about the importance of our connections with our pets. And I'm wondering if you could elaborate from your perspective a little bit about what you think about humans and our pets. Uh, it's all, you're all one. You're all one. It's all one energy. It's just a fractal copy of yours. It's your child, fractal child. It's not same as human child because it's very different. Genetically, it's different. but it is your creation. You create your pet. And that's why you see people walking with their pets. There is all this striking similarity because they created them. Obviously, it is a magic creation. It's not logical because the humanity comes la late in your history, in your biological evolutionary history. Humanity comes later than other mammals. but Mm, that whole construct of reality has been created in a way that you come first and then you created your past, your mammals are created from you, by you, by your collective consciousness. You are creating your past right now. So you created the distant past where the dogs and cats and dogs and cats and mm, other and cows and chickens have been evolved, but basically they were created from the future into the past. You understand? Do you? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. And thank you for that. I'd like to give you a quick little gift here. Uh, there was a there was a place at the Tulsa Zoo, and they had this otter tank, and the otters would just swim so happily all around. They would just swim and swim and swim amongst each other and all around. And I'd like to give that image to you. I'm so, sorry. I uh, you were speaking speaking fast and uh, the word didn't get to me. Just oh, speak it a little slower, please. The, Understand that you're speaking to double foreigner. <laughs> yeah, there was there was an otter tank that had these otters. What is outer and, tank? Uh, it's a tank that the otters would swim in. What's outer? Otters, a little uh, marine kind of like a river animal, with kind of leathery tails. No, they swim. They're not quite like a beaver. They're a little different. Some of them are out in the ocean, uh, like an oh, ocean otter or a, a river seal. otter. Seals. It's kind of like seals, only smaller. Okay. Now, and, and, very, and the tank is what? Tank is something. Uh, the, t the water now. tank is the tank that they swam in. Yeah, because they're aquatic. So it was in a zoo. It was in a zoo. Yeah, and they would okay. swim. Got it. And they had wow. so much fun. Yeah, they swam and swam around that tank. All right. So there's an image of happy animals in a zoo. Yes, and I wanted to share that image with you. It's like humans. Yes, yeah. having and fun. It's like us in a hologram, caught in a hologram. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy of, about yes. that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, you're getting it now. Okay, good. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Um, so... So you, you have pets, right? Daniel. Yes, is yes, yes. I have my, my cat. My cat. My cat Ringo. She's, she's a cat. Uh huh. Tell me about her. She's very connected. I understand that she's some kind of reincarnated royalty, uh -huh. and sometimes, and sometimes she actually likes to be royal. 
and treated royally. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, she's been she's been a good uh, a good mate, friend. Yes, all of that. Yeah, I'm talking about you. You want to come over and say hi? Huh? Come here. Yeah, come here. Come here, say hi to everybody. Yeah, say hi to Max. Look go here. Look here. Okay. See Max. See Max. She's just pet me. <laughs> So the pets are part of you. It's oh, yeah. only connected to your subconscious and unconscious and non-conscious levels of your body. So when they feel down, it's your message to yourself that you need to heal yourself. So yeah, they're part of you. Be, take them as part of you, and when you heal yourself, you can heal yourself through them. Uh, practice you are a healer. Everybody is a healer. Practice your healing abilities through hands and otherwise uh, on your animal, and this will heal yourself too. So you can apply your energy healing to yourself just by laying hands on yourself and sending energy from the heart to through the hands to whatever part of the body you want, even back to the heart. You build a circle which is very healing. And the same thing you can do to your animal. Send your Reiki energy, um, any other type of uh, healing energy to your animal Sometimes they are kind of little bored if you don't move. So you use one hand to send energy without movement and another hand to mm, pet them. And this way they are absolutely happy and everything works perfectly. Adjust as a permission slip, of course. Okay. Ringo, you have anything to say? Hmm? <laughs> No, thank you, Rojo. That's very nice. I'll, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, I'll let the next question come. Sharon? Sure. Thank you. Hello, Rojo. Um, I just had a question for a friend, and he is finding uh, a relationship with an energy at night in his house, and it's very active, and um, I just wanted to know if, you know, he can get some information on that. He's right here next to me. He's hmm. Um, can you give me a name? Um, yes, this is Derek. Uh -huh. Can you give me a, a day and a month of birth? June 2nd. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it Derek speaking? Yes. Oh. Tell me more about how does it feel? The, the, energy, present, the energy in my house it's, is non-threatening, I would say. It's located in the central part of the home in front of, the, in front of a fireplace. Um, this home is not a, it's only a rental home, it's not a, a family home or um, a historical home, but I can certainly sense the presence from time to time. I feel as though I'm being being monitored, um, and I, for some inclination, I'm under the impression it's a, it is a male presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, it's a portal. It's not a single being. It's a portal, so anybody can come in and out through it. But it's guarded, so it's not anybody. It's certain beings can come in and out through it. Um, keep in mind that it really d depends on which state of mind you are. Sometimes you are in a certain vibe when the portal is close to you. You are in a different plane of existence. So the fireplace is there, the room is there, but the portal is closed. 
when you get to the certain level of vibration, then it opens for you, and you can sense it, you can reconnect to it, you can, mm, yeah, perceive it. And it's up to you what to make out of it. It's, uh, again, whatever comes through it, again, is part of you. It's you are creating it in a way. It's part of the program. It's a permission slip for you to connect to something tangible. It's, again, your creation. Ah, obviously, there is some independent of your consciousness. There is independent personality that comes through. And this personality is not visible to me at the moment. But it's, again, up to you what to make out of this relationship. You are co-creating it. You can create it from the point of fear or from the point of joy. It's up to you what to make out of it. Ah, I would suggest you don't have to buy crystals. You can find them anywhere near your house, by the creek, anywhere. Just stones and pieces of glass. Simple things. And build certain crystal grid around it to re to connect to it in a nicer way. So it has every portal has its own personality, own consciousness, which is not human, but it it's conscious. So when you lovingly give them crystal energy to mm, connect better, to structure the connection, they are feel happier, they um I'm more open for you. They, you basically build a bridge between yourself and that portal. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you what reality to create. Obviously, you might want to invite your visitors to come in and to even to show themselves to you in a more visible way, to speak to you in a more audible way. And... Uh, Ah, uh, tune yourself to receive good visitors. It's again your state of mind, your state of dream. If you, if there is fear, convert it into light. So make the visitors as pleasant as you can. It's you creating them. You give them the vibration, and they come to you, you give step one step forward and they step to you one step forward and you meet halfway. So if you step up, you meet high visitors. If you step down, you meet low visitors. So it's up to you where to step. It's your vibration that defines on which level you meet them and who you would meet. Your vibration defines who you would meet. And you can invite me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the thanks for that. You're welcome. Okay. Way better than the rest of the team. No. Thank you. I. Does somebody else have a question? What? What? Okay. You're not talking for All right, let me finish with the blessing. Okay. Uh, I will talk a little bit about healing. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. Everyone is a healer. You are a healer. If you survived to this age, you are a great healer because you heal yourself. Otherwise, you won't be able to live. You are a terrific healer, and we applaud you. We adore you for being so skillful healers. Lord Eureka and other hand healing practices like Qigong and others. Your hand is connected to your heart 
and your heart is connected to the God and universe through the heart chakra. So the healing energy comes from their universe, from the center of your heart, goes into your hand and communicates to whatever through your energy coming out of your palm. The center energy, it doesn't have a color, but just to understand its nature, it's a Reiki energy. When you hold your, can you see my palm, Max's palm? Can you see Max's palm? Yes. You can move it up a little higher. Is it good now? Yes. When you see, when you hold the palm straight, like in classical Reiki, Usuyu, Usui Reiki, Japanese Reiki. You hold it straight, the energy comes mostly from the palm, and it is soft, it is diffused, it's unfocused, it goes wherever it is more needed. It's an offering of the energy, and it goes where it is needed most. And what's most important, it is conscious. It is conscious, it is smart. So. Helpers from other side come through that opening through this portal. You create a portal and come through that portal and exchange energy back and forth with a sick organ, sick part of the body, or sick chakra. Okay? So I would call this just for analogy golden energy because it is soothing and healing and nurturing and it's diffused like light which is diffused like a fog and then it goes in any direction it's unfocused it can move anywhere it can move through the clothes through the body wherever it is needed it even can go through distances it can go from Max's hand right now to you through distances it's intention what you put the intention to heal and then it goes. Now, if you hold hand like that, can you see it? Like that. Can you see it? Can you see my hand? Can you see yes. my hand? Yes. Yes. Then um, it's a different energy. It comes from the fingers. It's much more focused. It's like a spring of water. Yes, like a spring of water. It's much more focused. It, its actual shape is a spiral. It's a multi multi spiral, double helix, triple helix, like mixed together, like like a thread. It goes like a thread in both directions. It goes back and forth, one way and another. It's much more focused. And then you send a silver energy, much more focused. And you can put your intention in this energy, and you can brush the energy, brush the chakras. All right. Can I ask you a question? Yes. When do you use each one? When do you use the palm and when do you use the fingers? If you are in a state of allowance and permission, if you are in a submissive state of service, you use the golden energy. Just send it and whatever happens. When you feel like a doctor, a creator, a person in control, when you want to heal, when you're in a state of doing, then you work a little more on silver energy. You really do stuff when you are motivated to do things. And when you, thank you for, prom, for the prompt, and when you move the hand in a balanced way and the energy flows both silver and gold, balanced way and you have to play with your hand to see how the energies are moving but basically it's it's like you're holding a fluffy hamster a fluffy ball of fur you're like holding a manga yeah that would be the shape the manga avocado big avocado that's the shape it's a uh, more reminds me of your Antenna dishes, yeah, antenna television dishes. It's uh, a paraboloid, stretched paraboloid. 
then you are sending both central golden energy and outside silver energy, both. And the energy goes in both directions, each of them. Then it's more balanced. You're doing uh, both the energy surgery and the energy feeding. Golden is feeding and healing, and silver is more fixing and surgically fixing, yes. And be careful how you move it. Be conscious because you can, if you move it too um, strongly, too impulsively, you might disturb the energy flow. So if you're not sure what you're doing, do the golden. If you're more, um, how to say, more confident and you know what you're doing, if you feel that you're guided to do that, do more of uh, all the silver. We do silver a lot. Yeah, Yell Reiki is using a lot of silver energy. We know what we are doing, and we specifically target specific energy patterns, waves, patterns, vibes. Yes. And uh, I bless your healing abilities. Thank you for uh, listening to my short lesson. I bless your healing abilities. I bless your abilities to create joy, to create health, to create personal bubble of success. Now, go and interact with the bubbles of others. Hold your hands together physically and remotely. Connect with us, connect with each other. Let's create a network of light and shine. Let's create the network of light and shine together. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for that, Rojo. And I think a lot of people can use what you just spoke of um, about the healing. I think that was very helpful. And, <sighs> and many nice will hear. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Thank to you. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Rojo. That was brilliant. Thank you. All right. Yes, that was wonderful. I learned a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. You do. Thank you. Thank you, um, So now we will um, have Wendy. She will be doing the closing. She will speak for a little, and um, if you want to do a prayer at the end, that's fine. If not, um, I can close uh, Wendy and do the a short prayer. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, whenever you're ready. Okay. Let's make sure. Can you guys see me okay from like here up? Yes, we can see you. Okay. Okay. I wanted to take a moment to speak about the galactic languages. Um, it's something that I've seen to um, resonate with a great deal and enjoy very much and have been guided to share these languages with others um, and really didn't understand at first why but now I'm beginning to understand the importance of them and what they mean to all of us and our connections to our galactic families and most of us come upon them by accident and we're not really sure what they what they mean or what they're translating to and so they've asked to touch a little bit on how these languages resonate with each of us and when they when a specific one resonates with you it is typically because that is a connection or a communication with your particular galactic family and <clears throat> typically they just for most of us they just sort of happen by accident um, if you will and so I understand now that frequency and light and voice and the messages that are coming through in these galactic languages are so multi-layered they affect us on so many levels um, so it's not just hearing them it's what happens when we're receiving the messages that are embedded because many of the tones and the languages themselves are are 
packets of information in a single tone. So therefore, some of them can't be translated necessarily into what we would consider English. Um, they're a pure form of communication from our galactic families, invitations that we've asked to, to communicate with when we receive them, it's part of their communication to us. We connect with our galactic children, our hybrid children through um, galactic languages. They speak to us that way. And <clears throat> Takur has often mentioned um, about signs that many of the children communicate with signs as well as the galactic languages, so much of that has been my experience as well. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit of the languages and was hoping to perhaps get a little bit of a message along with it if I could. I'm starting to do a little bit of translation. So. Masitu ulua kashuma liasotuha. Kalitu kuramina alakuso. Suna malia katukura pailia kasina natula kishiatiha. So to Lea Kasha Kili Naha, so to Lea Kasha Halakisa Sotukura Minanasi Sotukaha, Sunali Akura Kasitu Kuamalia Tura, Kitura Katilia Palia Kotukua Shashian and Nasa Sotula Kakituha, Kalakatuma, Ala Sotukua Shuna Isa, Sulu Malia Kotura Kia Suna Malia Tushukwa Kiha, Sanina Nala Wakusu Akasitu Hashi. Alia kura pahitu wakaha na la asutu kayamali tu kwa shushu wa minanasi ilu kwa sutu haka i na la asutura kitu kayalia na natu wakusu. Iso tu kwa ya bili ya katutu wa kakisha shushu wa minanati hasiha alu kwa sasia tu kula inanaki ilu ya katutu kwa kalia kushu ma iatuha ala kinanasi Soto lia kasisia na na alua kabuko wa sato ya ruma ituha. Ala kiesu soto wa kala ina naso ala ki haku ka kiesu na. Asitu lia kasusu ma lia tuwa asitu wa shuna nitu wa kashu tuha. Sina nala anura katitu haka paki suna la kaku. Anumala atuko siyatu la kasitu wa kakisha shumahi asina numali atura akatila asatu raki ina nasu lwa kushupa itu iso la kiyashina itu la kasitu la asha na la atura katitu pali atushu kitu raki na nasu atuha masotu la kishuha nitu kurahi so namahi la atuha titu kwa shuna Situ wa lito kwa kina, sita laha. Sina nila wa urupu kwa salaha, titu raka titu kwa suna itu. Tala asaha, kuma satu raka saha sala asura kashaha. Mosna to raha kala hura. Masni to raka satu haki tu kwa sati hia nata hila sushu. Ni sora katia na hala kula hapa dauto akaha. Ni sato lewa kusuna hakiya. Do not underestimate the gravity of these messages and understand that they are among the communications of your galactic families, among yourselves, among each other. As you speak them, you will open up and activate the ideas of these galactic families and understand the messages they are bringing to you. Even if you do not understand them in your 3D reality understanding, realize the messages are penetrating you. Soto kuwa palata kishu so amalia tutuwa kasi hali amalia tuha. Halatula asona amalia tuha kashu mabia tuha. Kipiti li asamina adawra katia tuli asona amalia tuha. Tili akuku asamina na yashu akala atoku kaya katika. Siliaha alu maya ka 
a vyjadrenia slova kašmalia duši. Hikelia túha satiha, sina nitvaha a vyjadúha, allow them to enter your heart space. Asil túha, and alight your light bodies, alight the connection to you, your higher selves, your over souls. and your star families. Each as each of you listen to these languages, understand that the messages are unique to each of you as an individual as well as a collective. And as you all begin to resonate with these languages, they will begin to elevate the frequency of the human collective. Asula, allowing your chakras to open and invite the energies into you. Asutukua shunani aliatuha, allowing you to ground into your three dimensional reality while reaching. Ashutua tula iso tukua mitu, tula iso tukua mitu ha, while reaching a higher understanding. Situkua ha, situkua, simply by intending to invite the information these languages hold for you. Masituli amina nasutukua shahi. Salito ka kia na nasi lua ka kua hi na na kuha. Silu su sua maishia shia tuha. They are the purest, purest of energy. Misa tuli asutu ha shina nahi. Iso tu kua hi la anitu kuha. Coming directly to you. Iso tu kua mi ha si tu ha. Atu ha nu ma yala koso tu ha. Often no nas no translation is necessary. O tu kua or possible. Do not try to understand. Simply intend that these the information will envelop you. Asotukuya, enter your heart space and share this elevation with another. Asotukuya, and also do not see the information also coming from your galactic families as you have asked for these. New DNA infusions, understand that this is part of your DNA activations to be able to communicate with your galactic families. Asutura akina nali asu shuaki tu halisa nalaka tu raina alu sutu rashi asi nanaki solu malia tu kuwa etu kuwa ali takashana. Ala asana na tu rusu kwa salitu kwa sona malia tu kwa kita ali na naka salia tu rashi tu kwa mita iso tu ra iso and the children and and the galactic children enjoy this form of communication very much asi tu ra kina nasu itu ha ina nasu tu kwa remember that when we are visiting the hybrid children. Tasutua, we are communicating in a variety of languages because there are atukua mina nasutua new masitua. New new languages are even being developed as the hybrid children are combining these languages. Asitua creating a tusutua creating an even new vibration. Tasitua. Similar to your own um, Asi energy signature. Asi tua, much like a bird sings to another bird, you can hear a bird sing and another bird answer, and they are very far away. It is very much this principle that even though there are a thousand other birds in the area singing at the same time, these two can hear each other. And if you listen closely, you can hear one and hear the answer. Ashitukua among the cacophony of all the other languages. Asotukua, you can pinpoint. They pinpoint the mother and the child. Asotu, they know who their family is simply by sound.
asutu kwa mila, asutu ha. Asitukwa, these are not only considered galactic languages, but also languages of the light because they are bringing the light, the information from the emissaries of the light, which are representing all galactic families who wish to be involved in the representation to the human collective of these multiple galactic languages. Nasituwa yananituha alakura. Sinama silua katukwa shina nasa la kitukwa sa hala itu. Inanakura kisu sumala atukwa sa sita kile asa inanatu. Ah, shumanina asu, opening your chakras and opening the ideas to the light, entering the light body and activating the light within you. Satukwa masa tukwa hashu. Analia tukuha inana. And as each of these messages, is absorbed within you, you it, it opens up the new portals to allow even higher messages from other dimensions, uh, other other dimensions. Asitukwe maliatukwa shahi, ila na situha ka ituhala, na kura kasina nasi, situkwa shu na isotukwa. The mystery must be removed as so as many of us feel that they're nasituwa shituha from an old idea these languages come but know that they are languages of the purest highest highest light asitukwa mina nasituwa shu and always have been asitukwa who many understood at one time that this was sutukuha the voices of the creator speaking through them asitukwa speaking directly through their hearts and evoking an emotion they did not understand. This is still the case for many of us as we listen to the languages that it evokes an emotion and the emotion is the realization of who you really are and the shedding of the beliefs that <coughs> no longer serve you. Many of you are beginning to identify the different families. As you speak to one another, you will begin to identify your star families and the languages that they speak. And you, many of you, even your children, on your world are beginning to begin to speak these languages automatically. And they already understand what energetically what the, the communication is. This is to be encouraged. Remember that this is just another one of the synchronicities that you have asked for in your ascension process of identifying asitukwa, who am I, who am I? Asitukwa mila, asitukwa has. Be this, allow this to be just yet one another, yet another energetic connection between you, as well as healing modality. Asotukua, in the mention of healing modalities, asotukua, it is under, understand that the intention, asitukua, and the messages, asitukua, when, when the message is added to, the intention is added to the message, and the message is sent in intention through the hands, allow this energy to be released upon those who you wish to send healing energy to. And understand that the 
The light messages contained are also healing messages. So whether you are sending or receiving them, intend for them to be of healing if that is your desire. We are one light, we are one light. Bring this light within yourselves and out among you. For we are the galactic ambassadors. Alukura kasina natu asutu kua shuha tahi. Talitu kua suna asutuha. Shina nasu alaha sotu kua masituha. Sotuha. Mashula ketiatuha. May you always walk in harmony. Ashutuha. May your heart always be in harmony with your journey. Ashitiatula kasina natu laha sita hala. Naluatula Ashuna Tia Soha. Sonahi Sotuha Aluha. We are very excited about this transmission. Asitukwa Mila Asotukwa Ina Natuha. Shanu Tuaha bringing you all together. Ashutuahi na Asuna Nahu Anina Na Uashuta in a very special Sotukwa Sina Natuha energy. We appreciate your endeavors in assisting the the raising of the collective, the human collective. Sadatia Shuha Kaliya Tukua Maha Salukra Kita Kia Naha Satia Shuha Nitu Ahila Kasatura Isuna Yi Shua Kalahi Ina Nasuha Atura Kiha I Atura. It has been such an honor to be here with you today. 
ashutu kwani tuhala isu tuwa shuna tila kashia tuhala asahi mahala 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 ashitu no aki aki ono shiki woko asaki osha pamati alo osha kia luna Taranaka Yishikoto Aha. Thank you. Thank you for being sure. here, for speaking with us. And I also want to thank uh, Wendy for doing this for us. Um, if you want to do a, a short prayer, that would be good, so the, then we could close. Asi tu ala mina na lawa katu asa suha. Nalia tua ala kurana asi tua kisa ta kienaha. Solo kwa mala asu rakati hala maya shikwa kuluati ha. Nali tua kasina na asu la kia shuha ala tua. Ali kwa malia tua shoha kati. Nasila kasata kia shona asu loa kazua. Sinatila ashu la kati ha. Talate ya shoka tiena laha solo wa katuma yesu kulashi. Siva atua katuma nasa. Salitu asa avatia naki. Kiritu wa shamahi. Yera hasona mewa kasolo kapaya shona nati ha. Sala kasudra kashau ayasina. Salia tula asa tika kalasa na toka laha. Ayama ya tula patita kashuka kukua satiri. Ala nina nasi wa shua katila si. Si tala kashana nasi tuwa kashoha. Sali ya kula utawito. Kina nasi. Sali ya kutsu hataki. Kashina nasi wa tuha. Si watiha si kuhasha. Natila su asana nitu wa kailo shua si. Sona mali ya tuwa katila asana nasi ya tuha. Halatu wa si haksa shi ya tuha. Kamita visi. Ala tina nasi shu, ala kia sahati shu mohi. Ala kula tuma ala susu, salita maasi ya suma. Sofu kwa kina nasi wa su, shu maya hu kwa tina nitaka. Kavarisa, salia nangu ya shu. Kavita maasi ya tuwa ka shiha. Tawatia nitaku ya kalati ya sahati shu. Mahi shu. Kavarisa, mahala ya kia. Mahala. Namaste. Thank you. Dan, you have... I'd just like to remind everybody about the events page and the things that go on there. We have Will's um, Holy Fire uh, Hangouts on Tuesday. We have uh, Sarah's uh, Healing Hangouts on Friday afternoons. Um, there's some other Hangouts going on. Some of them, I'm not sure of their times. Um, I'd also like to remind everybody that they can find even more information at Human Colony TV or Hukalo TV on YouTube where these videos are posted. Uh, other information about the group can be found at www.hukalo.org. Sabrina's language gym. Yes, you have the language gym. What day do you do that on, uh, Sabrina? Normally it's on Tuesdays normally on Tuesdays? Okay, yeah. you'll post something on the events page where people can find it? Yes. Okay. Yes, also, Dan, can I just say it's uh, humancolony.org? Human. Human. Is it humancolony.org? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Humancolony.org. Humancolony.org, yes, sorry. I get my uh, okay. hoopalo and human colonies all crossed sometimes, yeah. Easy to do. <laughs> but well, we can be contacted from there too. Yeah. Yes. And um, Wendy wants to mention her uh, language of lights on uh, on YouTube. So I'll let her uh, do that. The only other thing I'd like to uh, remind everybody is everybody is open for sessions. Kim has sessions she's open for. Jim has sessions. Max has sessions, I believe, if you contact him uh, via email and Skype. 
Uh, Wendy, I'm not sure. Wendy, are you going to do sessions soon? At the language. Well, that's that's probably in the works. Um, I did want to invite everyone. I don't know if I, if, if everyone is aware, but um, I did want to invite people to um, my YouTube page um, channel. Excuse me, uh, Languages of Lights, where I do a lot of. Um, oh, well, only. They are strictly galactic language videos. I'm not in any of them presently, um, but if you'd like to give a listen, please do. Um, I think you'll, I, I hope that you'll find some of the, re the messages resonating with you and perhaps open up um, some DNA activations of your own that you might discover your, your own um, selves, identities, if you will, um, and, and galactic families. Thank you, Dan. Okay. I'd like to remind everybody that the site runs on donations. That information can be found at humancolony.org as well. Oh, Sarah wants a shout out for Quantum Galactic Society and the healing hangout she has on Fridays. Anyway, all these things can be found or should be able to be found on the events page. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, might be nice if it was on the events page. So, can, I, um, can I add another shout out? Jim. Sure. Jim, Jim, hi. I hope you're having an awesome time on your night off. <laughs> hope you watch this back. I hope we did you proud, and we love you, and we look forward to when you're coming back. Love you, Jim. All right. Um, what was the last reminder? Oh, donations. The site runs on donations. Humancolony.org. Please give what you can. And that's all I have, uh, Sabrina. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for all who attended and all of those viewers. Right now we have 20 viewers. I want to thank you for watching this. We also want to thank uh, Kim and Max and uh, Wendy uh, for doing this. And I want to say to Jim, I hope I'm glad you took the day off and you're enjoying yourself. You deserve it. So on that note, I want to say goodbye to everybody and may you all be blessed. Be blessed.